All right, I think it's finally time to take a peek behind the curtain and show you guys what I use to make my videos. So let's jump right into this with my main camera. This is the Sony HXR NX80, and it is by far the best camcorder I have ever used. I'm also really proud of it because it's the biggest purchase I've ever made with my YouTube earnings. But let me tell you about some of the other things that make it great. First of all, you have a lot of recording modes available. Now, I'm not gonna get all technical here, but you can shoot video in 720p, 1080p, and 4K. I've started to shoot all my videos in 4K, and I'll tell you what's enabled me to do that in a minute. This camera can also shoot slow motion in 1080. It can shoot 120 frames per second continuously and 240 frames per second in bursts. The camera also has a 12x optical zoom that can be extended to 18x if you use the digital zoom. Obviously, this is really helpful when you can't get close to what you're recording. So what about recording sound? Well, one of the reasons I bought this is because of its professional audio connections. In this case, two XLR inputs. I bought this shotgun mic separately. It's a lot more directional than the mic on board most camcorders. It also helps me capture audio from greater distances away. I can also plug in my Sony ECM44B lavalier mic. It's great for doing interviews and videos like this. Okay, onto my sticks. This is an E-Image GH06 head on two-stage aluminum tripod legs. This is something called a fluid head. That means I can apply drag or resistance when I'm panning or tilting, which make my shots smoother. Believe it or not, this piece of hardware actually has a connection to railroading. One of the men who pioneered technology like this was named Chadwell O'Connor. He was a big time steam locomotive enthusiast, but he could never quite get the smooth shots he wanted while he was out filming trains. So he developed his own fluid head for his tripod. And get this, he would eventually encounter another train enthusiast named Walt Disney and start making fluid tripod heads for him. Now the company O'Connor created is still around and still supplying the film industry today. All right, so what about my aerial shots? Well, for those, I use this DJI Phantom 4. I bought this in 2016 and it's still going strong. Amazingly, the only thing I've really had to buy for it is new propellers after a hard landing. This drone shoots 4K and the footage still looks great. I should also mention that I have an FAA Part 107 certification to fly drones commercially, but we can get into the rules and regulations some other time. Let's keep this video about cool technology and having fun. Drones are real game changers in my opinion. So many of the subjects I want to record are just inaccessible and this makes many of the stories I want to tell possible. Speaking of getting unique angles, this is my GoPro Hero 7 Black and I use it to put in places where my camcorder just can't go. Usually I end up getting a cool angle but sometimes things don't go according to plan. It's okay, the GoPro was fine. Fortunately, all I had to replace was the front protective lens cover. All right, now I think it's time to mention what I'm recording this video with. I'm using a Sony a7 III. Okay, so that's the major stuff I use, but here are a few other things that are helpful. Mainly just some small lights, different mounts, and cables. Now let's move on to voiceover and editing. Once I'm done researching and writing a video script, I head in here. This is my homemade voiceover booth, and as you can see, I've lined the walls with cheap acoustic panels, but you can probably tell this is still basically just a closet. Oh, and remember how I said my GoPro can get into places where my camcorder can't? Well, I'm using it to record this right now. Anyway, inside of here, I've got my Rode NT-USB. It's a great entry-level podcasting or voiceover mic. And you guessed it, it plugs right into my computer's USB port. To record my voice, I found another low-budget solution. I'm talking about Audacity. It's free to download and has everything you could need to do basic voiceover work. All right, now it's time to put everything together. And again, I found another low budget or no budget solution. This is DaVinci Resolve made by Blackmagic Design. It's also free. Over the years, I've used pretty much every professional editing software out there. And I would say DaVinci Resolve is on par, if not better than all of them. I mentioned earlier that I've started shooting in 4K. One of the things I like about DaVinci Resolve is its optimized media feature. This makes smaller proxy files that are easier to edit with. It's not a unique feature to this software, but I find it's a lot easier to use on here. So that's an overview of what I use to produce my videos. Now, I've acquired this equipment over a long period of time. I work in the television business, and I like using professional gear. Perhaps my bank account doesn't always like that, but that's another story. I've used cinema cameras, TV news cameras, steady cams, and gimbals, but Take a look at how far I've come. 
an old mini DV camera on a cheap tripod. Listen, the last thing I want to do is brag about all my stuff on here. In the end, these are just tools. Honestly, you could get started telling stories about the things that interest you with a cell phone camera and basic editing software like iMovie. Now I do make money off my YouTube videos, but I reinvest it right back into the channel. My goal is to keep making this product better and to keep having fun doing it. In the end, I like informing people and telling stories. And who knows, maybe what I do will inspire you to go tell some stories of your own.